Hello, everyone. This is Professor Maloney, and uh, happy July the 4th to you. Uh, today is July the 4th day. Um, I hope you're having a great day. There is no class tonight, as you should no doubt know. Um, so this recording is going to be a demonstration video on, on the first Microsoft Excel project, as was the case um, when I demonstrated the Microsoft Word Module 1 project. I'll be demonstrating about 50% of the Excel Module 1 project uh, with, uh, for you so that you know what you will be needing to do when you're doing the Excel projects, okay? Um, remember that you need to do the trainings. That's always number one. So if you do the trainings before the, the projects, then you'll be able to do the projects. You know, you, in some of you, in the case of some of you, you may have to do the training two, three, four times. In the case of others, you may have to do it five or six times. Maybe a few of you can just do it two or three times. But either way, make sure you're prepared. Do not send me any emails saying, Professor, Professor, uh, the Module 1 project doesn't work. No, it works. It works. It works on a Mac. It works on a Windows computer. Okay? May not work on a Chromecast because Google does not ever let anything be installed on their computers unless it's a Google thing. So you probably couldn't do it on a Chromecast. But anyway, um, so you do your training first for Excel Module 1, and then you maybe do it a second time, then do the video, uh, then do the project, Module 1 Excel project, uh, sorry, project creation uh, based upon this video, and you'll do fine. And remember that on projects, you get to do them three times if need be. But if you can get an A the first time, then you probably don't need to do it a second or third time, okay? And if you do need to repeat a project, remember that the, the project that you uploaded, that should still therefore be on your computer, is um, a good start. Like let's say you get a 90 on it. Well, then that's a great start. So then if you wanna improve that grade, you use the 90. In other words, you use the file that you, or you scored a 90 on, but you get it from your desktop, wherever you have that file. And then you look at the report that you received that told you you made a 90. And there'll be one or two things that you got wrong and try to fix those things and then upload it again. All right. All right. So let's get going over here. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't need that. So I'm going to go ahead now and go on over and share my screen. And then we'll get started on this thing here. And I'll be playing this in class on Wednesday night, July the 6th, which is also the day of your Microsoft Word exam. All right. Okay. So let's see here. I am sharing. I want to go over to, I thought I went over to MindTap. I have not. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to MindTap. And then I'll have to start by downloading the files as always. This was what I did in the just say close all windows in the um, Excel overview video that I did. Okay, so over here in Excel, note that all the Excel stuff is due on the 13th, okay, at 5.19 p.m. That's the case in the case of Module 1, Module 2, Module 3, and Module 4, and you'll be taking the Excel exam at 7.30 p.m. in class. And you get 10 extra minutes on Excel. You also get 10 extra minutes on Microsoft Access um, exam. So, um, but you still don't get to start it until 7.30, all right? Okay, and just real quickly to show you this, this what's happening this week. Obviously this is, so today again is um, Independent State, July the 4th. So your Word trainings and, and projects are all due on July the 6th at 5.19 p.m. At this point, Three-fourths of you have done the first training. 60% um, of you have done the first project. 60% of you have done the first, uh, the second training. 40% of you have done the second project. 38% of you have done the third training. Quarter of you have done the third project. And about a third of you have done the fourth training, all right, per word, that is. And the exam will be 7.30 p.m. Wednesday the 6th. Okay, so collapse all, 
and go back to Excel. And now Excel Module 1 Project Demonstration. So you click the Excel Module 1 SAM Project A link. Okay. This was exactly the same as I demonstrated in Word, other than it's now using the Excel application instead of Word. So you again, you click Start here. But if you want to see the details first, note, you can uh, submit the assignment three times. Okay. So when you submit it once, it'll say you've got two remaining. But since we haven't submitted it at all yet, or I haven't, then of course I have three remaining, and then click Start to begin the assignment. Okay, so start. Just like in the case of the Word demo again, so first we download the files, then we work. We're going to be working on our own computer. So once again, if you have not downloaded Office 365 Pro Plus from the MDC library link in our class in Blackboard, then you should do that first because you cannot do this project. Well, you can do it if you have an older version of, of, of uh, Office, but you won't be able to get as good of a score because the, you know, Microsoft, like every company, wants to sell you newer things. Like those of you that use a iPhone, you know, every year or every 18 months, obviously Apple wants to sell you a new phone. I use a Samsung. Samsung wants to sell us a new phone every 12 or 18 months, right? Well, even Microsoft has that same right, and they want us to buy a new version of Office every, you know, two, three, four years. So anyway, if you have an older version of Office, you won't get the same score. So you need to you know, do what I told you to do. So we work on it on our computer after we download this, the instructions file and the start file. Then once we work on it and we complete it on our computer, then we upload the file to MindTap and it tells us the expected file name. Okay. And once we click here and then we go attach that file, then we're going to submit it to MindTap for grading. All right, same as we did before with Word. So I'll download the instructions. It's downloaded. I'll download the start file. It's downloaded. All right, now I want to open the Excel file. So I have my old Word documents from a few weeks ago, but that's all right. Okay. All right, so I want to enable editing. Uh, Updates for Office are ready to be installed, but first we need to close some apps. Uh, I do not want to do this right now because of this. So I do have Office 365 Pro Plus, by the way, but when you have it on your computer, periodically they will tell you you need to, you know, there's some updates available. I don't want to do it yet, so I'm going to just get this X here. You may or may not get that in yours. Okay, so this is the start file, all right? Remember the start file ends in a one. So it's under it's SC underscore EX19 underscore 1A underscore first name, last name, underscore one. We changed the one to a two. In my case, because again, I teach this class quite a bit at the Homestead campus. Periodically, I download the file. So this is for the first time I downloaded it in the summer for my A-term class. And so I have the open and close parentheses with the two in between. You won't have that. So yours will be SC underscore EX19 underscore 1A underscore first name, last name, underscore 1. And you're going to save it to be the same name, but underscore 2. So here I go. So I'll hit my save. Ah, let me do my save as. All right, this PC. You save it to your download, save it to your desktop, save it wherever you want. So I'm going to first just change this 1 to a 2. Okay, so 2 a 2, that's what I'm going to save it as. And then I'm going to go to Homestead Classes, uh, not in here, but I think in here, yeah, yeah, here's my B term. So I'm going to save it now. And you notice it ends in a number two. I changed the one to a two. All right, so I hit save. And I do not add Excel SX to the name of the file. I do not. All right, so I do that, minimize that. All right, now I downloaded the uh, instructions file as well. So go back to downloads, and I want to open the instructions file. Okay. All right, so this one, same thing. They're giving me the edit, uh, sorry, the updates for Office are ready, but since I can't do it now, this just popped in in the last few days. I haven't been on my computer much, um, you know, since last week, I guess. But anyway, so I'll enable editing, even though this part doesn't matter on the Word, in the case of the Word document. So I'm going to take the Word document and boom it to the left. If you have a Windows computer, that'll then sort of have it take up half the screen. You can do such a thing on a Mac too. It's a matter of whatever you have to do for it. I don't need this saved. Don't save whatever that is. And then I go and take this file and bang this one on the other side of the screen. Boom. 
So now I've got the instructions, and the instructions will also have a picture of what the file should look like. I'll make that look a little bit bigger for now, okay? And so you notice here on the right side, there's two different worksheets. This is called a workbook, an Excel workbook. But within a workbook, there may be one or two or more than two worksheets. So the documentation just tells us that the, in this case, what they're calling the author, who they're calling the author is my first name, my last name. If you're looking at it on your computer, it'll be your first name and your last name based on how you registered at the MindTap site and also based on how you're registered at my uh, Miami-Dade College, all right? Meaning in Blackboard. But where we're gonna do the work is over here in the budget summary. So if you click the budget summary worksheet, this is where we're gonna be doing our work, all right? You notice it sort of looks like this over here, but there's no um, chart. I demonstrated how to do a chart in my Excel overview video, and I probably demonstrated that in one of the Excel trainings that I did, where I, or the Excel MindTap training demonstration video, where I demonstrated 32 tasks, eight from each of those four modules. Um, but either way, you do the trainings, you do your observe, and you do your practice, and then you'll be able to do any chart they want or anything else you want. Or they want. All right. Okay. So I'm going to make that smaller again on this left side and then scroll back up to the instructions. So, in the getting started, remember, uh, and some of you may not have done a project yet. Well, if you, if you haven't done projects, it's very important because they represent about 32% of your class grade. So, the getting started, you don't get points for any of this. But this is where it just says open the file available for download from the SAM website. So I downloaded that file and I've now opened it. It said, save the file, same name, SC underscore EX 19 underscore 1A underscore your first name, your last name, underscore two. You do not type the dot XLSX, just like I did right here. It's underscore two now up there, okay? And I'll tell you right here, if you do not see the dot xlsx file extension in the save as dialog box do not type it because if you did what that will then do is add two dot uh, dot xlsx's to the end of your file name so that it would end in dot xlsx dot xlsx again okay and then you wouldn't be able to upload that file because uh, because it would be an incorrect file name all right so you just do it the way i did and the way the instructions here tell you then it says, with the EX19, so once you change the name to an underscore two, make sure that your first and last name is displayed in cell B6 of the documentation sheet. So again, go back to the documentation sheet. Here is column B, and here is row six. So this thing here is B6. And look in the name box, B6. It has my first name, my last name. Yours will have your first name, your last name. Again, based on how you're registered. All right, but you go to budget summary. So I've done these things here, and it says, by the way, if cell B6 does not display your name in the documentation sheet, then delete the file and download a new one. It basically means that um, something happened. And just like I said in the case of Word, I know no one would cheat in this class, even though sometimes in classes people try to cheat. If someone tried to cheat and they you know, just typed that person's name, like my name here, I can obviously type this and change it to John Doe or Pamela Smith or, you know, Ted Green or any other name to match his or her friend in class who gave them the this file for free or for a cup of coffee or for a Coca-Cola or something. Um, there's an embedded encryption key, which in the case of mine, ties in with my employee ID at Miami Dade College. You would never see it, but it's in this file somewhere. Somewhere in here, there's an embedded encryption key. Okay. And that embedded encryption key must match me because it, it will match someone. If it doesn't match me and I upload the file with my name, the encrypted, uh, the encryption from the embedded encryption key wouldn't match up and the person who cheated 
by getting it for free or by buying it from someone would get a zero. But also the, the smart person who maybe made a hundred on it, who gave it to this person for free or for $10 or whatever, he or she would also get a zero. How would I know? Because the embedded encryption key will tell who it came from. All right. All right. So we know we're not going to cheat. Yes. Good. So click the budget summary and now I'm going to do the project steps. I want to first see how many steps there are. So project steps, these are the ones you get points for. One, two, three, four. And notice one, two, three, and four only have one step each. Okay. Step five, there's two steps, A and B. Six, there's two, A and B. Seven, there's one. Oh my God, it's entering a number. Gee, enter the value 925,000 to provide the targeted annual sales amount for the Northeast region. And you enter that in cell F10. Wow. All right. Anyway, then eight, a, B, 9, A, B, 10, A, B, 11, A, B, C, and D. It's doing a chart. So that's where you're doing the chart. 12, hide the grid lines. I remember distinctly showing that in my, uh, my Excel um, MindTap training video as well. But anyway, so pretty easy. But there's 12 steps, which means if I do exactly six, if I get them all right, I would be at 50%. But the way they, they uh, apportion the points to these things, is so that it adds up to 100. So the first six may be only worth maybe, let's say, seven points. Maybe the next six worth eight points. Or the first six might be worth six points. The next six might be worth seven. It'd only be a difference of one. Um, but I may do number seven just to ensure that I get you a 50%. Because I always say that I want to show you enough so that you can get a 45, 50, or 55%. All right? Okay, so here we go. So the project steps. Let me read this a little bit. So I'll make this one a little bit bigger again. Oops. All right. So Josh Bartell is the senior director of the Pennsylvania field office for New Era Medical, a global company that manufactures medical equipment. He has created a worksheet summarizing the revenue and expenses for the first three quarters of the year. He asks for your help in determining what the Pennsylvania office needs to do to meet its targeted profit goals in the fourth quarter. Go to the budget summary worksheet. If it tells you something like this and it has the word worksheet, the worksheets are these two things on the bottom. And remember this for uh, the second module project. Usually two or three students get a zero in it, and of course, they send me an email. Professor, professor, I did everything right, but I got a zero on my project. How could I have got a zero? I know I did everything right, or most things right. Well, duh, you got a zero because obviously you didn't name the budget. In this case, it wouldn't be budget summary, but you, they told you to rename a worksheet, and you didn't rename it right, and all the work you had to do was on that other, the new worksheet. So if you don't name it right, you've done nothing. Right, because they can't find your your the worksheet they're looking for. So be careful of stuff like that too. Anyway, all right. So I'm going to go in here. So go to the budget summary worksheet. That's where I am. Cut the worksheet title from cell I1. That may look like an 11, but remember in Excel the way everything works is that you have only letters in the columns. Okay. So the ones with columns, like this one that may look like a one is an I. There's an H, there's a J. So obviously this is I, but they want me to cut that anyway. Um, where am I? Cut the worksheet title from I1 and paste it in A1. So I'm going to click right there. I'm going to do Control X. You can just right click cut. You can use the scissors up here. It's up to you. And then go over to A1. So click up there somewhere. There's A1. I'll, I'll do Control V like Victor. You can do your little Control Paste, you know, right click paste, or you can do the paste option from in here, which would have been allowed had I not just done it right there. All right. So that one's done. And again, then go down and look. Let's see. Let's see where New Era Medical is. New Era Medical is in A1 right there. All right, so we did that. So already we got a few points, probably six or seven points. All right. Um, in cell E2, make it a little bigger again. Add the text number off. It's in bold, so that's what they want us to add. 
so that the complete text appears, this is in cell E2, as number of sales people. Number of. Okay, so here is column E, here is row two, here is what's in E2, sales people. They want it to be number of sales people. I'll even uh, cut the number off, but butting it right up against the F. So I'm gonna do control copy on that, and then right here, click before the S, control V, and then do a space after the word off. And there it is, hit my save, scroll down, make it bigger, number off salespeople. And salespeople is in small, including the S, off is in small, including the O, number is in capital, uh, capital N. All right, so that's done. Make it small again. All right, go back up. So I did one. Wow, I, I cut some text and I pasted it over here. I did number two. I typed two words. Number, Sorry, I didn't type. I just copied it from this Word document, but I could have typed number off just before the salespeople. And, um, and of course, they had a colon at the end. I didn't type the colon, but make sure that you, know, you do what they tell you to do, right? Okay, so that's number two. Now, number three. Enter quarter two in cell C4 and quarter three in cell D4. Well, again, I'll just copy it. Control copy. So C4. Here is C. Here is four. Here is C4. I'll just do a control V again. And now this is quarter two because I that, that's what they asked me to do. And I'll just do this. Uh oh, no, I'm going to undo that ooh, ooh, because it doesn't have the same font. So I'm going to undo that. So instead of doing it that way, I, I'll just do it this way. I'll take the fill handle and drag it to the right and to the right again. And see, now it did it all for me automatically. Or you can just type it. But if you take the fill handle, remember, here's the, re here's the cell, right? It's a rectangle. But the bottom right corner, just above this white hollow plus sign, meaning the cursor, is a little green square. When you hover on top of the little green square, that's the fill handle when it's a thin black plus sign. So you click it, click, hold the mouse down, the left mouse button down. You move over one and you see it says quarter two. Move over again, it says quarter three. If I wanted to, I can move over again. It would say quarter four and quarter five and quarter six, but I don't want, oh, well, quarter two, sorry. Say all these other words again, but I don't want those. I just want it right there, right? Done. Hit my save button. Again, scroll down. Boop. Make it bigger. Quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, right down here, right? Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. And mine now has quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. All right. All right. So make it smaller over here again. A little smaller anyway over here again. Okay, go back up. So let's see what I have done there. So I did number one, which was just cutting the title from I1 to and pasting it in A1. I did number two, which was adding text number off before the word salespeople there in cell E2. I did number three, which was entering now quarter two in C4 and entering quarter three in D4, okay? The other way I was saying you could do it is just click here, like click in the cell, okay? And just type quarter two. Because it already has that fill color on it, if you just type in it, it'll keep the, the fill color. It won't change anything and you would type quarter two. But what I did was take that fill handle and do it that way and then they did it for me. All right, so that was number one, number two and number three. Now, in uh, number four, in G5, enter a formula without a function that subtracts the target revenue F5 from the year-to-date revenue E5. So when you're doing subtraction, if they say you're subtracting something from something else, you start with the something else. So if they're subtracting target revenue, which is F5, from E5. So it's equal E5 minus F5. So we go to G5. So here's G, here's five. Okay. 
I'm going to say equal. And I still do these with point and click. That way I don't have, don't have to type them. But if you'd prefer to type them, just type them. They tell you what to type. Right, 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 right. Well, more or less anyway, because they're saying subtract. So when you do a subtraction, you say equal. And then we're taking F5 from E5. So I'm going to say E5 first. So here's E5. Okay. And then I hit a, uh, the dash mark, which is a minus. So the dash is a minus in Excel. And then I click the E5. And then I enter. All right. So in G5, I now have a formula. And the formula is equal D5 minus E5. So I'm going to scroll down. And the answer you see is a negative 2011. Negative because you see it's got an open and closing parenthesis. So 2011, 250. Again, scroll down here. Oops, sorry. Over here. Scroll down. Make it big. Oh, what the heck? What the heck happened? What, where was I? Maybe I was in the wrong spot. Just talking too much. Let's see. Oops, let me make it smaller. Okay, let's go. In cell G5, G5, yeah, I'm in G5, subtracts the target. Let's make it smaller so I can see the rest of what I'm missing. Subtracts the target F5 from the year to date E5. So from E5. So it's E5 minus F5. Oh, I did D. <laughs> All right. So the target from this one. So it's from E5, not D5. So go over here, E5, and then minus, I change the E5 now to a F. Delete that. So it's that. Sorry about that. But again, that's why, you know, when you do something, you make sure you pay attention. And then, then I was yapping, uh, and, but I obviously didn't, uh, when I read it, I didn't read it right. So it's E5 minus F5, and you always start a formula with an equal sign. So now if I scroll down over here, okay, and then again make it bigger. So here is G5. Here's G5. It's minus 1088600, 600. The minus is not there, but the open and closing parenthesis means it's a negative, okay? And then you see the um, percentage is now being calculated as minus 12.5%. But that's going to change at some point because right now I haven't done the rest of the stuff down here, which we're going to be doing, which will then change the variance. All right. But that one is done. So that's done. So make this smaller again. Go back up. So I did one, two, and three. And now I've done number four. Okay. All right. So. Josh in number five, Josh wants to calculate the gross profit, uh, gross margins or gross margin for quarters one, two, and three and the year to date. Provide this information as follows. So he says, go to cell B7. Well, here is B. Okay. Here is seven. So here's B7. Okay. And he wants me to do A, enter a formula without a function. So if it's a formula without a function, you don't type something like equal sum, equal count, equal max, equal um, min, equal average, et cetera. We're doing it without a function, which means we're just having cell addresses again and then the math. So it says a formula without a function that divides the gross profit, B6, by this one, B5. Okay, so we're going to say, Enter a formula without a function that divides the gross profit by the revenue in this one, in B5. So I'm going to say here, it's B5 and it's B6, okay? So it's this one first. So here, I'm going to say equal, and then I'll just point and click again. This one here, B6, a forward slash is what division means. So on your computer keyboard, if you have a standard keyboard, it's just to the left of the shift key. But you can also do it on the number pad. It's above number eight on the number pad. So equal B6, forward slash, and then B5, all right, and enter. And the answer comes out to 12.5%. So again, scroll down, make it big. So the answer is 12.5% here in B7. 
and mine, there's B and there's seven. So 12.5%, 12.5%. Now let me also say this, okay? Because I also mentioned before, not only do you not want to cheat, but some people, and literally in every class I teach, even though half my students make A's, okay? Um, there's a certain number of people, it might be one, it might be two, it might be three in any given class. What they do is they look at the picture and then they type the answers in. <laughs> so in other words, instead of putting a formula equals B6 forward slash B5, they would just type this as 12.5%. Well, if you do that, you get exactly zero points. You don't even get one point out of 100 for, for trying, meaning for typing the number. You must do it. If they're telling you to do a formula, you must do a formula. So over here, we did a formula, okay? Here, we've now done a formula. And the next one now, they're gonna want us to do another formula. So let's go back to the top. Let's actually move this a little smaller again. A little smaller again. All right, and go back up. So that was number five. Okay, so I entered a formula without a function that divides the gross profit, okay, for B, for quarter one, which is B6, by the revenue in quarter one, which is B5, right? But now 5B says fill in the range C7. So here's C, right? Here's D and here's E. They want us to fill in this range, C, oh, sorry, this one, C7, D7, and E7. They want all of these answers here to come from this formula here. It says, fill the range with the formula in B7 to find the gross margin for quarters two, three, and the year to date. So in other words, I take here, and what do I do? This fill handle, I point and click on it, drag over, that'll put an answer there in C7. Drag over again, the mouse button is still pushed down. That'll put an answer also in D7. Over here, that'll put an answer in E7. Release the mouse, boom, boom, boom. So it's now 12.5%, then 12.9%. But if you click on 12.9%, then look at the address bar, which is the formula bar. It tells you the formula that got that answer. And here, again, 12.0%, it's got a formula. This one, it's got a formula. Okay, hit the save button, scroll down, on the left, you know, on your, your instructions document and C, make that one big, okay? All right, so we got 12.5 on ours up here in row seven, okay, row seven, we got 12.5%, 12.9%, 12.0%, 12 and 12.5%, and then another 12.5 and a zero. Now, down here in the picture, there's 12.5%, 12.9%, 12.0%, 12.5%, 12.5%, 0%. So it's the same. Save it. Did a good job. Okay, make that small again. All right, go back up. So that was number 5A and 5B. So now I'm going to do number 6A and 6B. And I may do number 7 just to make sure I get you somewhere around 50%. All right, so number 6. Josh needs to sum the sales for each, excuse me, uh, Josh needs to sum the sales for each Pennsylvania region for the year to date, okay? Provide this information as below, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do what they want. So this time they want a function and it's the sum function they want. So when you have a sum function, it means you type equal sum, and then an open parenthesis, and then you do the range part down here, B10 colon D10, all right? So they're saying in cell E10, so let's go to here's E, here is 10, here's E10. So they want me to do something here in E10, and what is it they want me to do? So let me now read it again. So this is 6, 6A. In cell E10, enter a formula that uses the sum function to total the regional sales data for the Northeast region, which is the range B10 through D10. So here is B10, here is D10. So they want me to use those three values in here, all right? So I say equal sum, open parenthesis, this is in E10. Remember, I haven't said this too much in this video, 
But remember the two videos I did for Excel thus far, Excel overview video and Excel MindTap training demonstration video. I used a sum function in both. Okay, so if you need to go back and review them, do it. If you need to do your training again, do it. All right, so equal sum, open and close, uh, open parentheses, and then I'm going to click B10, drag to the right to D10, and then close the parentheses. So the formula, equal sum, open parentheses, B10, colon, D10, close parentheses, enter. The answer is 696, 687, and there's also a total down here now but we're only looking for the 696, 687. Scroll down on your Word document, make it big, and we're looking for E10. So here is E, there's 10 at 696, 687, just like right here, okay? But again, do not type it. You type, uh, you'd type a formula, yes. So that my formula was equal sum, open parentheses, B10, colon, D10, close parentheses, all right. So make it smaller again, and then go back up. So that was 6A, and then here's 6B. So use the fill handle in 6B to fill the range E11 to E13. So here's E10, okay? They want me to now take the fill handle and put that same formula in the E11, E12, and E13. So here, you click it, you click on the fill handle, drag it down to there, okay? Hit the save button, go down and look for whether it matches up with what they're telling us it should be, make it big. All right, so E10 is 696, 687. E11 is 1099, 642. E12 is 311, 178. E13 is 1,003, and the last one is 3 mil 111 400, 3 mil 111 400. There's also values down here in revenue in row 15, but we haven't done these yet, right? So the formula that I carried down is correct. Hit the save, boom, 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 all right? All right, so go back up, make it smaller. And then, let's see, that was 6A and 6B. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more, which is number seven, just to make sure I give you 50%. So they're saying in cell F10, enter the value 925,000. So here is F, here is 10. Wow. And now in this case, I told you you can't type uh, answers out. Well, in this case, it's not typing an answer out because they want the value 925,000 entered here. So I'm typing. 925000 more zero enter save okay so that is doing 7 out of 12 so for sure i'm giving you more than 50% but depending on how much the, each of the each of the numbers are points wise you know it'll come out to somewhere around 49 50 51 52 or 53 all right, all right. So I'm gonna close the instructions, save my doc, my Excel spreadsheet again, make it a little bit bigger again, just in case they don't want me playing with it. So hit the save like that and close it, right? Close it, remember where it closes and you must then find it from that spot, okay? All right, now, in my case, I put the, ending one, you know, the one that I had done in my homestead classes, in the homestead classes for the summer, and then in here, and then I'm looking for 7-4. No, that was in the folder. Actually, it's in here. So in here, that's my video, but here, here's where I put the uh, Excel file to, right? The Excel worksheet, see, 7-4 at 4.43 p.m. Look at my computer clock down here, 7, 4, 4.44 p.m. So that's the file that I want to upload. And remember, you know, to MindTap, but notice that it ends in an underscore two, all right? Always make sure the file is closed. Mine is closed, all right? So now, right here, drag and drop the file here 
or click to browse. I'll click to browse. Okay, and this is where I want it to go. It's already here. But if I get out of there and then go back in and then in again to be in here, this is the one. Click it. Look at the name again SC underscore EX19 underscore 1A underscore John Maloney underscore 2. Hit the open so that it then pulls up. And what do I want to pull up? I want it to pull up this file. So the expected file name, sc underscore ex19 underscore 1a underscore John Maloney underscore 2 dot xlsx. The saved file, sc ex19 underscore 1a underscore John Maloney underscore 2 dot xlsx. So in other words, it's the same file. And now I'm going to hit submit. All right. So now under that, I want to go ahead and do it. It says, Submission successfully graded. It's already graded. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? And but look, two of three submissions remaining. In other words, I can submit it again if I want to. What do I want to do? Well, right now I want to just look at the graded summary report. Click it. And now it says there it's it's graded. And you see how again in the case of mine, they're always going to have whatever with the open and close, but that's because I do these in more than one class every other term or every term, whatever. So I'm gonna open the file, and then that is gonna be what I'm gonna then see. It says I got a 56 out of 100, all right? So let's see, let's first of all make this a little bit bigger. How can I make that bigger? Let me, if I do a, no, I don't wanna do that update, close that one, but I can enable editing here. And now, if I want to, I think you should be able to see that. Hopefully we can. So for number one, eight out of eight points. For number two, eight out of eight points. For number three, eight out of eight points. For number four, eight out of eight points. For number five, eight out of eight points. For number six, eight out of eight points. For number seven, eight out of eight points. Then number eight is also worth eight points, but I haven't done it. You're going to do it. I haven't done nine. Nine is worth nine points. I haven't done 10. 10 is worth nine points. I haven't done 11 or 12. They're also worth nine points. Okay. Excuse me. I'm having a little drink here. Yum, yum. All right. What is the drink? It is an Equate High Performance Protein Shake. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so remember you look at each step, not only the number, but also the individual steps in case there's more than one. And then obviously you do it. Now let's pretend that this was yours now. Okay, but and not but sorry, but and. So, and you got number one right, you got number two right, you got number three right, you got number four wrong, you got number five right, you got number six wrong, you got number seven right. So in that case, your number four is wrong, and I said number six, I think, is wrong. So on your computer, you have saved a file, right? Yeah. Not the report, but the actual file. The file over here, <clears throat> excuse me, in Homestead Classes, in here, and in the summer B term in my case, but wherever you put this file, okay? So you open it up again. And here, so if you then got one of them wrong, from the instructions, you just open this file up and then fix it again. Remember, we did these things here for sure. We did these things here for sure. Okay. And we did this one for sure. And whatever else, you know, I was talking about. And then you go ahead and make, you know, any corrections, but also you want to make sure that through the instructions document or through this thing here, because the report is still the instructions document, 
but then they just added the, the points you got based on what you were doing. So if let's pretend that you the next thing you have to do is number eight, it just says what? Well, so then you read number eight. Josh wants to determine how much revenue each region needs to generate in quarter four to reach its target for the year. Enter this information as follows. So 8A says in cell G10, enter a formula without a function. So in this case, you don't use a, a function. And it's going to subtract the target sales for the Northeast region, which is F10, from its year-to-date regional sales, which is E10, to find the amount of sales needed to meet its target. And then for 8B, you're going to copy the formula in G10 and paste it in the range G11 through G14. And in other words, you just do it. You do the steps necessary, right? That's your job. All right. I'm going to close this thing down now, and hopefully you will be able to make a 100 on this project. All right. See you in class. I don't need to save the report, so I'll say no, and I'll close this down. I'm going to go over here and stop the, the recording. Have a great